Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're checking out an amazingly powerful effects processor from Eventide. Let's get started. Today we're looking at the all-new H90 from Eventide. Now this is a pedal format processor, but it's incredibly powerful, as powerful as any rack mount processor out there. It's great for guitar, for bass, for keyboard, for studio use. It can cover just about anything you need for music making. Let's check out some sounds. To begin, here's our dry sound. I'm playing a Sweetwater exclusive version of a Heritage H150. <laughs> I'm just going to step through a few different presets for us to listen to. We'll begin here. What you just heard are just a few of the 
almost unlimited sounds that are available using the new H90 from Eventide. It's an incredibly powerful processor. If you're familiar with the H9 or the H9 Max that Eventide makes, it does tons of different effects. Well, the H90 takes that to an entirely different level. With the H90, Eventide has brought together their entire legacy of sounds and effects. We've got sounds from the H9 Max, from their individual stomp boxes, as well as from their rack processors. Like I said, it's almost an unlimited palette from which to build your own tones and textures. But it also offers tons of creative control possibilities via MIDI, via expression pedals, foot switches, hot knobs, hot switches. There's so much you can do with the H90. Let's take a closer look. One of the beautiful things about the H90 is whether you're working from the front panel or you're using the accompanying H90 control app, you have total access to everything you need. It's a very easy pedal to use despite all that power we talked about. The first thing to understand about the H90 is the architecture. On top of everything, we have the program. And a program is made up of two presets, which can be entirely different algorithms or sounds. We can route those in a variety of different ways as well, as we'll see. Now to select programs, we can use the select knob. You can turn that and then press to activate the one that you're using. We can also move up and down through the programs using the foot switches. B moves us up. A moves us down, and when we press active, that particular preset will be activated. Now I mentioned that we have tons of sounds, and Eventide has actually made it easy to dial in on exactly the sound that you want, and you do that using the program switch. So if we click that, now we can filter all those programs to find exactly what we want. So we have multiple lists here. Ambient, Bass, Factory One, H9 Max, Lead, and so on. So you can choose the list you want to draw from as far as programs are concerned. Then you can choose the type of program, delay, distortion, EQ, and so on. And within both of those, you can filter down to the individual algorithms, band delays, black hole, bouquet delay, chorus, and so on. So you can dial down and find exactly the type of sound that you want to use. We also have three quick knobs on the front panel that give us instant access to parameters that we're likely to need during a performance. So you can reach down and adjust the wet-dry mix on the first preset, for example, the delay mix. We can pop over here to our second preset and adjust the mix for that or its decay time. So we can instantly move between the two presets and make adjustments on the fly right from the front panel. Now speaking of presets, we can also filter down and choose exactly the presets we want within a program by clicking the preset button. And now at this point, you can see we have preset A and preset B. By pushing preset, we can move back and forth. And by pushing the LED, we can bypass or engage the individual presets that make up a program. And we can scroll through those using the knobs and choose exactly the presets that we want to make up our program. Once we have our two presets that we want to use in our program, we can work on the parameters and the settings for those presets as well as the overall program by clicking the parameter button. And here we have access to all the individual parameters. We can scroll through multiple pages and see each of those. This is for the program here. You can see by the P, if we press again, we get preset A and its parameters. Push again, we get preset B and its parameters. Now you may notice this HK up here on top. HK stands for hot knob, and that's this knob here. It can be assigned to a parameter so that you can instantly grab something again on the fly if you need to. So if we can turn that, you can see that in this case, it's adjusting the wet mix overall, but we can assign that to any parameter that we want. <laughs> Thank you.
As you heard, we've got rhythmic aspects to many of the presets and programs that are inside the H90, so we want to have control over tempo as well, and there's several ways we can work on that. If we press and hold the parameter and preset switch together, we'll go to tempo mode. We can set the tempo we want here using this knob, and we can choose the source for the tempo, which is very important here. It can be saved per program. We can set it by MIDI clock, or we can set it globally. And we also can set it using tap tempo, using this foot switch when the light is flashing. To exit, we simply hit this switch here and get back to program mode. When you're performing live, the H90 gives you access to six different parameters that you can switch on and off, either using the internal switches or external controllers. We just hit the perform control, and now you can see the gray bar across here has three different parameters, so we can turn hot switch two on and off. If we press again, we see three more parameters. So in this case, we're bypassing the individual presets, and we also have tap tempo available on this switch. Now again, that could be the internal switches, it could be external switches you have connected, it could be MIDI, however you set things up is up to you. You have a lot of different options with the H90. Let's exit performance mode, we'll go back to select mode, and there actually is another way that we can move through programs. If we press and hold, we'll go into bank mode. In this case, we've got three different presets on these three foot switches that we can switch among. We move through banks by pressing and holding to move up, down, or we can jump instantly to bank one. You could also set up external foot switches to move you up and down through the banks and to select presets. So let's go back to normal operation here with select. I've mentioned external foot switches several times. Let's take a look at the back panel and see how we get signals in and out as well as hook up those external controllers. The H90 is unique in that it has four inputs and four outputs, and each of those inputs and outputs can be switched between instrument and line level, which makes this processor equally at home with a guitar or bass as it is with a keyboard or even in the studio hooked up to your audio interface. Now having those four inputs and four outputs gives us a ton of different routing options. At the most basic, we could run mono in and mono out. We could run mono in, stereo out. We could run stereo in, stereo out. In fact, we can set this up with insert loops as well, as we'll see. And you can even set this up as a dual path device with separate effects on one set of stereo inputs and outputs and a totally different effect on the other set of stereo inputs and outputs. In that case, you could use this as a four cable method processor with two amplifiers, or you could use it to create two different effects in the studio with your audio interface. Two additional control inputs on the back panel allow us to connect either expression pedals or up to three button foot switches. So you could technically have two expression pedals and all the front panel controls, or you could even have two three button foot switches for a total of six plus the front panel controls. You have lots of options, but it doesn't stop there. We also have MIDI in and out on DIN jacks as well as MIDI over USB. Which brings me to the routing possibilities for setting up those presets. I touched on this earlier and we talked a little bit about it with the inputs and outputs on the back panel, but let's look at how it works. If we press the routing button, a little diagram will pop up here. You can see we can run in series, one preset after the other preset. We can also turn this and set that up for parallel where the two presets are operating side by side. Now in addition, we can have two external inserts using those additional jacks on the back panel. So we could have one mono insert, in front on either leg of the parallel path in parallel with the two parallel presets after either preset and at the end. And we can also add a second one. And note that the second insert can actually be before the first insert. But we're not done yet. You can actually control the input and output levels as well as the polarity on those insert points. If we turn to the second page, we can see send level, return level, and mix for our insert. And we can jump to Tails off, latency, if you have an effect that's actually causing some latency, you can adjust for that, and you can flip the polarity here. If we move again, we can get to insert two and make those same settings. So you could set this up with two mono inserts in either series or parallel with the inserts placed anywhere that you want it. You could also set it up with a single stereo insert if you want. And we do that using dual path. To access the dual path, let's push these two buttons to get to system. And this is where we set our preference for the overall device, as well as some global parameters. So let's select that, scroll back, and now we can see a couple of things here. First of all, we can choose a playlist that we're working out of, and a playlist could contain all the programs for a particular gig, for example. We can also choose the routing type. Now we've been working so far in insert, but if we turn that, 
will actually go to dual path where we're using those separate inputs and outputs on the back for independent ins and outs. And this is where we can set up either a stereo insert or use this as two completely independent processors inside one box. Here's also where we set up our bypass mode. With DSP mode, we can have tails, where when you bypass, the effect will keep ringing afterward. If we set that for relay, which is also known as true bypass or hardware bypass, in that case, the effect is gonna stop completely when you hit bypass. If we turn this to the second page, we can set spillover. Spillover lets the effect keep ringing when we change from one preset to another, and we can set the amount of time that that lasts. We also have multiple different source types, guitar, bass, lead, which is lead synthesizer basically, or, or sub, which would be bass synthesizer. And so whatever you're running into the H90, you can select a source that's gonna give you the best results. Kill dry allows us to completely shut off the dry signal, so we only output the wet signal, or the effect signal from the H90. This is often the way you'd use it if you're using it in the studio with your audio interface. If we go back over here, this is where we set up our IO. So we set our levels to instrument or line. This is also where we set up switches an expression, and you can actually see what jacks have connections plugged into them. In this case, I'm plugged in mono for my guitar, and I'm going out in stereo. MIDI allows us to access all the different MIDI parameters. Preferences allow us to set how bright the LED will be. So we can turn that down so it's not too bright on stage, or make it brighter for a dark stage. And finally, you can check the version number that you have here as well as the serial number. We exit from here. One final thing, if we press and hold these two foot switches, we can call up the tuner so you don't even have to have a separate tuner when you're using the H90. You can set whether the tuner mutes or pass a signal through. You can set the frequency for the tuner and to return, just hit one of the foot switches. We'll exit back out to our program select mode. It really is very simple. Once you understand that select or program mode and perform mode and how you access some of those deeper functions, it's a very easy pedal to get around on. But if you want a more visual display, then you should check out the H90 control app. So this is the H90 control app. As you can see, it gives us control over all the different parameters we might need, as well as all of the different programs and presets. So over here on the left of this first screen is where we have all our presets. And we can move through those. We can see that when we change this, it'll actually also change the preset on the H90 itself. So we can move through those and instantly access all the different settings here. So this is our first preset in the program. It's the ambient delay, and we have control over all the different parameters. The general parameters, as well as the effect parameters. Over here is preset B, and again, we have the general parameters, as well as the parameters that are specific to that effect. We can bypass each of those individually. Notice that when we do that, it also bypasses on the front panel of the H90. Down here at the bottom, we have the program parameters. So our overall mix, our overall input gain, output gain, and so on. We can set up our routing here. So we can see series, we can see parallel. We can decide whether our inserts are mono or stereo. We can turn our inserts on and off. We can decide where to place those. So it gives you a visual way to work through all these different things. Now once we've turned an insert on, wherever we've placed it, we can also access the send and return level, the mix, the latency, the polarity, and whether tails are on and off as well. So this gives us all the control over routing that we need. Here's where we make our control assignments. We can set up our quick knobs, choose what parameters we want to assign to those. In this case, it's assigned to mix for the program. For preset A, we could assign that to input gain. For preset B, we could assign that to output gain. So whatever you want to do with that, it's totally up to you. This is also where we assign our foot switches, as well as map our parameters. Now here's where we have our preset library, and this is all the presets that we use to create our programs. And we can scroll through all of those, and we can also filter them by different types. We'll look at just delay types, and then we can get down 
and look at specific algorithm types within that. So just filter pong presets. Now beyond editing, we can also access programs. So we can search through the different programs that we have available to us. We can see what list each of those programs is stored in. And we also have our system settings. So the app gives us total control over everything that's happening inside the H90. So whether you want to use your computer to edit parameters visually or graphically, or you want to work right on the front panel, either way is available to you. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the H90 Harmonizer from Eventide. As you can tell, it's a super powerful processor. It does so much, but it's also awesome for everything from a simple slapback delay to a little bit of overdrive to simple chorus. It can cover everything from there to a huge wide range of ambient textures and more. It really is one box that can cover so much in your rig. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.